Hello and welcome to Shrewsbury Flax Mill Maltings. My name's Chris Smith and I've been a Senior Director at Historic England ever since we bought this site with the aim of doing what we are doing today, which is repairing the building. It's a strange thing for Historic England, despite being responsible for all the important sites in the country, to buy one. We don't normally do that, so the question is, why do we buy this? This is built in 1797, and when it is, it's the world's first cast iron framed building. It's built for the Benyon brothers, who were Shrewsbury merchants, by Charles Beige, who was a Shrewsbury um, civil engineer, and by Hazeldine, William Hazeldine, who was the local iron master. When we bought this in 2005, our chairman, uh, Sir Neil Cousins, who is a leading authority on industrial archaeology, said of the building, without Shrewsbury Flax Mill Maltings, no Chicago. So that's absolutely how important this site is. It's not big compared to many of the mills that you'll have seen. Five stories high, 16 bays long, about 40 feet across. Uh, but it's really, really big in the story of the Industrial Revolution. The importance of this is hard to exaggerate. When uh, the Benyons built this, it's interesting to understand what they were aiming to do. They were seeking to build a mill that didn't go on fire. Traditional mills with steam engines and clanking metal machinery and flax and cotton dust went up in flames all the time. That's what they did. So this is a, a critical attempt to move on the technology for building a building which had no wood. So what you see next to me or just behind me here are, are the first columns purpose built to carry transverse cast iron beams um, which then are bedded directly into the walls. The arches above which carry the floors above are brick and the whole thing is tied together with wrought iron tension members. That's it. That's the moment that we understood for the first time how to frame up a building without wood. This is the world's first example of a cast iron frame building and it's a seminal moment when it's created. In order to create this, Charles Beige worked with and talked to lots of the local professionals who were developing this, this technology all around him. Uh, Thomas Telford, uh, the great engineer who was working on the canals in, to Shrewsbury and the one through Clangothlin, um, was working with, with Hazeldine, but what they ended up with was a world's first, a unique building. For a hundred years there was a successful business on site, so remarkably different from what the town down, down the hill looked like. Um, that was a, a country town with oil lighting and horse transport, and here was this new world of gas-lit huge factories with, with hundreds of people, at one juncture 800 people on this site. But eventually, as often happens, things changed. The, the flax mill was closed because it had become loss-making and there was a period when nothing was happening on the site. But what happened next was radical change and you can see evidence of most of this behind me. The site was converted by a local maltster into a maltings and maltings require far fewer windows so you'll see that the mill behind me now has blocked windows Maltings eventually require moving a lot of stuff around the site, so there was a new hoist tower, and you, those of you who are historians can work out when it was built, 1897, and that's why the Queen Victoria crown is on the top. And there was all, it also built was the kiln, in which the germinated barley was malted and turned into malt. Uh, I'm standing on the site where the railway ran into the site, uh, and the arches, you can just see one up behind me, uh, where, where the coal was del delivered direct to the kiln. So there was a period of, of radical change and a radical new use. And the building showed how powerful and good it was in that it stood up to that without any distress whatsoever. All this matters now, however, not, not so much because of the past, although the evidence of the past is really important. But what this really matters for is for the future. And we will in the future be bringing the whole of this site 
back into use and we feel quite passionately about the fact that there have been two centuries of success and we're about to make sure this building plays its successful part in the next hundred years and in the regeneration of North Shrewsbury. So what does this building tell us about civil engineers and civil engineering? The 18th century was a time of incredible cooperative scientific ferment and lots of people didn't quite know whether to call themselves civil engineers or not. Beige knew Smeaton and may have thought of himself as a civil engineer but he couldn't have signed up to the ICE because at the time it didn't exist. However, as a civil engineer, he solved the problems that were needed to provide to this community at that time safer working conditions, a better investment circumstance and an exciting step forward in the story of construction, which as I've said before, was going to move on to eventually tie into the construction of today's great towers.